three, two, one. Here we go! Director of Product and Customer Support for North American Case Construction. I'm joined here today by Garrett. Hi, I'm Garrett Campbell. I am the Sales Training Manager for CNH Construction Equipment for North America. And we're also joined by Brett. Hi, I'm Brett Battaglia, AMS Sales Leader. So today we're going to cover with you some preseason preparation points that we like to cover with our customers. And as we kind of go through this, we'll be talking a little bit about um, maybe different strategies with machines that set idle over winter. Maybe you have a fleet of units that, you know, are transitioning from winter over into your spring, summer uh, type jobs. We're going to talk a little bit about where the wear and stress areas are that you should be looking for, in addition to kind of talking you through a, a thorough inspection of these machines. And as we talk about this, think about as you're going into the summer you don't want to be sitting there going, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have added this attachment or taken care of this, added site control or done telematics. Now is the time that you want to be doing that when you're a little bit slower or maybe not in the field just yet. So make sure you take care of these things. And we'll talk about taking care of these things before you're in the heat of your business for the summer. Yeah, that's really the name of the game is how do we bring forward any opportunities that we could see during the peak season for you? And how do we bring that forward now to the point where we can address it, understand what the needs are? We're going to talk a little bit about where you can actually look for some data that will help you, you know, kind of understand what some of your risks are, uh, as well as a, a few other points. So yeah, let's dive in and we're going to start doing a walk around. But at the end of this session, we're going to do a live question and answer session. So at the bottom of the screen, Click on the Q&A section and type in your questions. And Ted, Brent, and myself, we're going to answer those once we're done. So let's go to Ted and talk about doing your preseason walk around. So for those of you that are joining us today, you're also going to notice that there's going to be a walk around type card that we're also including in the program. And that card is just as a kind of a reminder, run you through a few points. But a couple of the first points that I like to bring up with our customers is to say, if you have a machine that's been sitting idle, over winter, it's a great opportunity before you go firing up that machine and moving it, take a look around for any obvious signs of, of leaks, uh, maybe corrosion, things of that nature. So for me, I do a quick walk around on this CTL. I would take a look at the rollers, make sure that there's no you know, obvious oil leaks that are pooled up on the tracks. Look underneath the machine to make sure nothing had been leaking. I, I start to take a look at cylinder rods that may have been exposed during that point in time um, that we don't have any corrosion on that. Is there any damage to any cylinders, maybe hoses that have been rubbed, uh, things like that that you maybe didn't catch uh, in its busy season last year and you maybe have just put the machine into storage. So with that said as well, we also want you then to, once you've done your, your obvious point walk around on the outside of the machine, jump in the machine, start the machine up. And when you do start the machine, as you're letting that machine warm up, start poking around and making sure that all of the features um, that you have on your machine are operating properly. It's a good time to just make sure everything, you know, works as it should. And then as you start going through that as well, when you have the machine running, it's another good opportunity to take a look for any other leaks. A lot of machines that are out there in the industry today actually have a UV reactant dye in the oil. And with that being said, a UV light can be a really handy tool because it'll actually show where these leak points are in a much easier way. Um, the other thing as well to consider is talking to your dealer with your serial numbers and all the details of your machines to make sure that there's no outstanding um, improvement programs or, or updates that need to be made to those units. That'll help you make sure that you have a successful season once it ramps up. In addition to that, if this is, is something that you're not comfortable performing on your own, talk to your case dealer. There are several different types of packages that we offer. In addition to the dealers are used to doing preseason inspections on a unit and looking for areas that could cause you some downtime. Pay special attention to tires and tracks. Uh, tires and tracks obviously are the one things that really take a lot of abuse that's out there. This could be a good time to um, you know, start to see obvious like big cracks in the carcass of a tire, or you know, maybe you've got um, some damage to a track, things like that. These are all great considerations to start that discussion with your dealer. Make sure that those parts are going to be available when you need them. Uh, and in addition to that, you know, the other tip that I like to use is as you're walking around the machine and taking a look at things, it's a great opportunity to take a few pictures of the lube charts. Anything like that is associated with your machine. So that way, maybe you're out 
you know, out and about and it dawns on you, hey, I need, I need grease. What type of grease do I need? Or, or how often do I do this? You've got it on your phone. It's a quick reference when you're away from the machine. With that said, we'll go back to Garrett. Yeah, thanks, Ted. Um, I know Ted's talking about these preseason walkarounds. Back when I was in the construction and, and mainly concrete industry, we used to take a couple down days prior to really ramping up for the season just to make sure that our equipment was, was taken care of. We got a lot of that preventative maintenance out of the way that we could. And this is that time where it's important to not only do that, but as a business manager, really analyze the data. And, and for you data, data nerds, this is that time where you can nerd out and you can take those numbers and really take them and input them into your business costs. We talk about telematics a lot. Telematics lets us look at things such as fuel usage, idle times, as well as a lot of different other things. In a time where we're uncertain about what our fuel prices are going to be coming up, we want to make sure that we're using that fuel the most efficient way possible. So now's the time to take that telematics data that you have from last season and, and look at what, what your business is doing. First off, let's look at the utilization of the machine. Do I have a machine that is sitting and not doing anything for a long period of time? This might be the opportunity where you can sell that machine so you're not carrying the overhead cost and the worries of preventative maintenance and breakdowns and really just get that off of your books. Now, when you need that machine for two to three weeks, work with your local case dealer to rent that machine for that job and not have to worry about that overhead. The next is excessive idling. Look at what your operation looks like in terms of how long are these machines sitting idle? And what can I do to change that? Is it training operators? With a lot of our machines, we have programs that you can turn on that if a machine is sitting idle for the set amount of time, it's going to turn that machine off. This prevents excessive idle. And the reason why that's bad is A, we're wasting fuel. We don't want to sit there and burn fuel for no reason. And B, it's adding engine hours that aren't needed. Why is that important? First off, it's putting wear and tear on your engine that you don't need. Second, when you go to trade that machine in, it's going to depreciate the amount that you're going to receive for your trade-in. So let's keep your trade-in value up, shut that engine off when it's not needed, and keep those idle hours down. And then that's another thing is just as we train the operators, make sure that you're training them to be more efficient so they're not sitting there. Don't leave the machine and let it run for 20 minutes while you're doing something outside of it. Train them and take that opportunity to make sure they're using your fuel and your machines the most efficiently. And finally, this is an opportunity to look at the efficiency of your overall operation. Is there things that we can change to reduce the idle time or to make operators more efficient or train those operators to do things more efficiently? And this is that gives you that opportunity by looking at that data and translating that into real-time action. We have telematics in all our machines, whether it's the smallest mini excavator all the way up to the largest excavator and every type of machine in between. As you know, any machine that comes with ProCare comes with three years with the advanced subscription of SiteWatch. If you have not activated SiteWatch, make sure you do that now. Because what that does is not only does it give you that great advantage of knowing what your business is doing in terms of idle time, it gives you that peace of mind with security. You can turn on geofences, know where your machine is, and it can alert you to if that machine starts up when it shouldn't or it goes somewhere it shouldn't as well. And it also lets you know about maintenance. When is maintenance coming up and due? Part of that maintenance is talking about lubrication and filters. With us today, I'm going to turn it over to Brent so he can talk a little bit more about lubrication and filters. Thanks, Garrett. As you move into a new season, now's the perfect time to do preventive maintenance work. For many of you, equipment's either idle or less busy now, so let's get it ready for the upcoming season. It's also a great time to take a closer look at your fluids and filters. Fluid testing is, off, is something that's often overlooked in our industry. However, fluid testing helps ensure the integrity of fluid quality, um, and various related systems, including filters and pumps. You can work with your dealer to have your fluid tested at any point. Adjusting engine oils based on region used to be something that was fra done fairly frequently. However, now due to advances in technology, it's no longer as necessary. Our number one engine oil, a 10W40 semi-synthetic, works uh, in temperatures ranging from 13 below to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and in even colder temperatures with an engine oil pan heater. Another good tip is to check hydraulic and transmission systems and fluids. Many people think that all hydraulic oil is the same, but we've made some great advances with our new Hytran Premium, available for the first time at your local case dealer. Hytran Premium is designed to keep transmissions, axles, and hydraulic systems free of deposits while inhibiting wear, corrosion, noise, sludge, and foaming. This fluid works in all generations of machines and has been proven to prevent rust, sticky hydraulic valves, flow restrictions, and gear wear. The next good tip is to check your cooling system and make sure it's working properly. Our Tier 4 machines use organic additive technology or oat coolant. If your machine uses oat coolant, it must only be topped off with oat. Mixing oat coolant with the non-oat coolant will lead to gelling. Another good tip is to check and test your batteries, especially if the machine's been sitting idle throughout the winter. We suggest using genuine case MagnaPower batteries, which were designed and tested specifically for our case equipment. Be sure to stop by your case dealer today and they can help you find your case MagnaPower battery that fits your machine. It really cannot be said enough. As you're servicing your equipment, be sure to use genuine case OEM parts. All of our oils, our hydraulic tr fluids, our transmission fluids, our batteries, everything was designed specifically for our case machines and they're designed to last and work through our heavy environments that we deal with. If that wasn't enough filter and fluid talk for you, we're doing a whole webcast on March 24th. So be sure to visit kce.com to register. Now we'll turn it back over to Garrett. Another thing to think about as you get ready for your season is machine control. I'm not here to sell you on why you should have machine control. We all know the benefits of getting on grade more accurately and faster, reducing the wear because you get to the grade faster with less passes, as well as making any operator more efficient, whether they're a new operator or they've got 25 years of experience. That's not what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about is now is the best time for you to put those systems on your machine if that's the direction that you're going to go. There's two times that it's the uh, most efficient to put them on. First is if you get it factory fit right from your dealer and get it going right when you purchase that machine. The next is during your downtimes so that they can, your case dealer can get the systems put on because there's calibrations and settings that need to be taken care of. They don't want to be doing this when you should be putting that bucket in the dirt and making money. The other reason is because as you have a new system, it comes back to operator training. Once you get the system put onto your machine, you want to make sure that your operators understand it and can figure out that system before it's backing up a job and you're trying to do it in real time. Give them the time to understand the system and that way, once you are ready to go forward with your jobs this summer, they're used to it and they're the most efficient then. Another thought is, as you look back at last year, think to yourself, what attachments could I have used to make our lives easier. You know, everybody knows that skid steers and compact track loaders have a wide array of attachments and make it the most efficient machine for a lot of different uses by adding different ways to use it. But they're not the only ones with attachments. Whether you're putting thumbs or hammers on excavators, uh, four-in-one buckets on wheel loaders, there's a lot of different attachments out there that is really gonna help optimize your operation. But once you come to July, you think to yourself, hey, I could really use this. There's probably a lot of other contractors out there thinking the same thing. So you might be waiting a couple of weeks as you order that and you're waiting for it to come in. Now's the time to talk to your local case dealer, get that on order so that by the time you're ready to go, it's in your fleet and you're used to it and you know how it operates and you're ready to go hit the dirt. Another thing is what dealer installed accessories or DIA kits could I be putting on my machine? Can I be adding hydraulics to my skid steer? Can I be putting thumbs on? Now is the time. Take that time. Work with your local case dealer to make sure that you can get those DIA kits installed now. So once again, it's not affecting you when you should be out there digging holes, pushing dirt, and making money. Well, that's good. I think that's a good transition into talking about parts and consumables as well. And, and depending on the records that you've kept in, in the previous year, that could be a good leading indicator of some of the parts that you might need throughout this next season. If this is a new machine that maybe you're not that familiar with or you don't have that data for, it's a great opportunity to think about what are some of the standard parts that, that are a great one to have on site. 
air filters are a great one, an inner and an outer air filter. Um, we start talking a little bit about fuel filters as an example as well. Fuel fil filters are extremely important because a plug fuel filter will cause immediate downtime. And today's filtration systems are actually filtering down to a very, very clean system. So the very, very tight tolerances. And with that said, you can actually increase how often that you may have to change fuel filters depending on the quality of the fuel that you're putting in the machine. Speaking of quality of the fuel going into your machine, one area too that you also want to take a quick inspection of is your bulk tanks. Make sure that the fuel filling sources that you're using have good clean fuel in them. There's not a lot of sediment in the tanks, but if there's a fuel filter on those, a fuel filter and a bulk tank fill can save you a lot of changing fuel filters on your machines as well. So a couple of other things that I, I like to bring up as well is make sure that you understand which oil you should be using in that machine and make sure that you have some so that you can top them off. Especially when it comes to like skid steers where you're changing attachments and things like that frequently, you can see small you know, amounts of oil when you're doing that. So it's nice to have some on, on site. One of the other points as well is, is to start thinking about your attachments and your edges and your teeth that you're gonna need. So if you've got an attachment that has, you know, wearable items like carbide teeth or, you know, maybe they're knives in a brush cutter or, or blades on a rotary cutter, things like that. These are all points that, that you can reach out to your case dealer about, find out, you know, what that's going to take to have those so that you have them on site as you need them. Uh, and maybe it's a great time to even change some of them now or talk to your case dealer because maybe there's a different design of a tooth as an example for a bucket that could actually help you in your current job uh, that you are planning out when the season finally breaks. So with that said, you know, I'll hand it back over to Garrett. Mm -hmm. You know, Ted talked about clean fuel, but what about a clean cab? You know, whether you're transitioning from snow into your summertime work or if your machine's been sitting idle, you know, these machines get used in a dirty environment. It's easier now to pull out that shop vac while it's in your shop clean out that cab and make sure it's nice and clean, ready to go as you move into the next period of the year. The other aspect is make sure that you're inspecting those cab safety items, you know, make sure that seatbelt is not worn frayed and it's functioning correctly, as well as turn on any lights, make sure all the lights are working, make sure that the heating and the air conditioning is working properly. Because as we all know, an operator that's comfortable is gonna be sitting in that cab much longer. It's gonna make them more efficient and it's obviously gonna to add to your bottom line. So make sure you're checking those and you're checking the lights in every operation in that cab. And speaking of checking lights, I think, Ted, you were going to talk a little bit about that, right? Right. And, and you already kind of hit on some of the safety items. And it's important that your safety items are addressed because you want to make sure that if you have beacons, right, whether that's a regular rotary beacon or four corner strobes, uh, make sure that they're fully functioning. Make sure that the backup alarms on your machines or the travel alarms are functioning. It's also a good time to understand if, if the alarms that you have on your machine are going to be adequate for some of the uh, job requirements. Certain job requirements also call for a special type of a backup alarm. Um, in addition to that as well, you know, Garrett already talked a little bit about making sure that the seat belts are present, things like that. But this is also a good time to, to go in, take a look at your ops manual and understand if there's any other areas that maybe you could be missing. Uh, a lot of times as well, people start to uncover maybe a, a hidden feature that they didn't know existed because they just hadn't had that time to review the ops manual. And as you're planning, you know, it's essential for you as a business owner to really plan out your year. You know, a house doesn't start when the teeth bucket of that excavator hits the dirt. It's months in advance with blueprints and permits and, and planning that way. And your business should be no different. Look at what you have lined up. You've been working for jobs. You've been lining them up all winter, getting them ready to go so that once you can run and that dirt's ready to for being moved, you can go. But what about planning your machine usage? You know roughly how long it's going to take to do certain jobs. So if you know that you have an oil change coming up in 100 hours and you know that you have two or three jobs that are you know, going to take you right into that 100-hour range, you can plan effectively to have that planned downtime and not have it happen in the middle of a job where you're pulling a machine out of what it's doing and making you money. It, you can take care of it and then move it to the job after that so that you have that planned downtime incorporated. Another aspect is just knowing the costs of your business. I know on our last webcast, we talked about the total cost of ownership. And this is where you can get really precise with that telematics data that we talked about earlier. If you can take your fuel usage, your operator's salary, you know, how many tires you're putting on it, 
you can go to kce.com and use the total cost of ownership calculator to really narrow down how much does it cost me an hour to run this wheel loader or run this skid steer. That way, as you're building out job plans, you can make sure that you're building the cost of running your machines into that building plan, into what you're going to charge your customers to make sure that you're optimizing your returns. This is using the business intelligence that's available to you from kce.com and from your local case dealer to really optimize, plan, and make your busy season the most profitable and productive. And I think right now we're going to be going back to answering questions for you guys. So I'm going to turn this over to Bill, who's going to moderate our questions. Yeah, when I think of business intelligence and uh, two guys who uh, wear great vests, I think of Garrett Campbell and Ted Polzer. You could say we're invested. <laughs> uh, you are invested. You are certainly invested. Brent, thank you for joining us as well. We missed the vest note, but that that's all right. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, great conversation, gentlemen. Uh, if you look uh, down here at your bottom toolbar, you'll see the Q&A box there. We're going to jump into some live Q&A uh, with the folks here. We're going to get to as many questions as we can. And if we don't get to your question in the live discussion today, uh, either Ted, Garrett, or Brent will reach out to you and answer that question after the webcast today. Thank you again for joining us. First question that came in, I'll throw it out to, to any of you gentlemen. Uh, telematics, uh, can it alert me to maintenance intervals? And we touched on that a bit, but maybe expand on it and explain how. Yeah. So telematics is one of those things where it can do as little or as much as you want it to. So in the telematics portal or the site watch portal, you're going to be able to go ahead and set up what you wanted to be alerted to, how long before it alerts you to what needs to be done. So yeah, there's a lot of different things that you can set up to make sure that you can plan um, and preemptively get things ready to minimize downtime. Even if it falls in the busiest season, you know when it's coming to plan efficiently for your business. It's a great question. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, and while we're on the, the topic of precision topics, I, I, I stick with you, Garrett. Um, machine control systems, how long does it take to install them? You know, that's going to depend on the, the scalability of the system. You know, we build our systems so that you can go from 1D to 3D and, and really... It, it's all going to depend on what you're buying. So I, I don't have exact times for you. Maybe, Ted, do you have an, a rough idea on? Relatively, the, the, the systems that we install are, are not really invasive into the machine. It, there is going to be some sensors that are mounted on the machine, right, at pivot points, things like that. What it all boils down to really is what type of control valve you have today. A mechanical control valve is going to have to be changed for an electrohydraulic type of a valve. So it really depends on the vintage of the machine that you have, but we have solutions, whether it be a mechanical operated valve or even a lot of our other machines that come with EH controlled valves on them. Those are obviously the simplest because those are designed for plug and play use. Perfect. This next question, uh, I'm going to throw over Brent's way. Uh, Brent, what does a fluid test tell someone? Yep. A fluid test helps tell you the integrity of your systems, your fluids, your filters, your pumps. Um, and it's important to do it in regular intervals. That way you can also track over time what's happening over time and seeing if anything's changing within your system. Uh, another question coming here uh, might be good for you as well, Brent, but we'll throw it out to the group. Uh, does Case offer loaded filter belt service idea cabinets? Uh, what, what Do we have any kind of offerings there that are fully loaded? Yes. If you can work with your dealer to get a cabinet and, and load it with the appropriate equipment that's, that you'll need in your shop. Um, so reach out to your dealer and they can help set you up with a customized program uh, to make sure that when you need that filter, you need that fluid. It's, it's available. It's in your shop. It's ready to go. Uh, we've had similar questions to this before, but with how heavily we hit it, I think we're getting it again. Uh, engine idling, why is it bad? Explain uh, why we should minimize that as much as possible. Multiple reasons, but I think the most important reason is that the emission systems that are on these units today are designed to be operating under load. Uh, and it needs that type of a heat that's going through that system to have it function properly. Engines idling just don't create enough exhaust gas temperatures to really let the emission systems function at the level that they need to. And when I say that, it's, it's not necessarily because it changes the emissions. It's because you know, you're going to have to have a more frequent service with that system if it's not hot enough to be you know, removing uh, the particulate matter and things like that that, that we don't want to see. Another question here uh, coming in from the field. Uh, why is my chain case oil milky? 
uh, on my skid steer. I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah. So what happens is this is actually a very common question that we receive in service and it's related to, it's a sealed component in, in an enclosure and those steel tanks, if you think about it um, through basically heat and cool cycles, what happens is we actually get condensation that builds up inside of tanks. And this isn't just a, a skid steer thing. This can be on any machine that has a sealed type of a tank. And it's always a great practice in the beginning of the season to take a look at those uh, and make sure that if you're seeing signs of that, it's an indication that that has water mixed in with it and it needs to be changed. Excellent. Uh, another question here, Brent, you talked about uh, the importance of o OEM specified uh, uh, fluids and components. Uh, does OEM engineered fluid uh, really make a difference? Yes, it absolutely does. And we cannot stress that enough. We put countless hours and in, in years into development of our different fluids and components, and we make sure it specifically works the best in our equipment. It's going to help make your equipment perform the best. Other fluids may work, but it's not going to be efficient. It's not going to be up to the same drain intervals. Uh, so we cannot stress enough, always use OEM fluids and filters. And um, uh, another question coming in about telematics. Uh, if they don't have SiteWatch now, but they want to add it, how do they go about doing that? Well, talk to your KCE dealer. You know, most of our stuff is going to be easy to put a modem into it and activate that site watch system. And like I said, you can get that all the way from down to like a 17C mini excavator, you know, and through everything to do what you need to do, to whether it's tracking your uptime or your idle time, tracking your on off and location. But talk to your CE or your local case dealer to get the uh, modem added and activate your site watch. Very good. We um we just spent some time here this last weekend with all the snowstorms, uh, <laughs> spending some time with our snow contractors. A, a question has just come in. Uh, are there any considerations I should keep in mind uh, on my tires and tracks as we switch from winter months to warm weather? Yeah, I can take that. I mean, the considerations, I mean, obviously you're going to see some air pressure adjustments that are going to be needed, you know, in a, in a normal pneumatic tire, right? When we see a, a flash of very cold weather. But the other question that you could look at when you're looking at switching between seasons is do the, you know, the tread pattern or tread compound that you have, is it the appropriate one to get the most out of that machine? So as an example, snow tires on a wheeled skid steer can make a huge difference versus a tire that we would generally use for dirt purposes. So it's a, it's a great way to take a look at that. And the compound of those tires is different to be able to provide better traction and better productivity as well. We're going to go for a few more minutes here. So I'd encourage you now, if you've got additional questions, uh, drop them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen here. Uh, this next question came in. And I'm going to throw it out to the group as a whole. Uh, can we run our TR310 at full throttle after use to help clean out the emissions exhaust system? I, I think there's some clarity here on how our emission systems work and what's needed there. Yeah, I mean, high engine speed is, is better than low engine speed, but just relatively no load high engine speed, all it's doing is consuming more fuel. Um, you know, what it's really about is actually working the machine to be able to develop, you know, some real high exhaust gas temperatures, right? And if it's a turbocharged engine, that helps because the turbo is spooled up. We're adding more fuel. You know, all of those things are going to contribute to it. So I'd shy away from just free running an engine at high RPM because it's really not going to do much for you above idle. And then another question, this is a, a good clarification on the discussion earlier about oat coolant. Um, uh, can you give a little more depth on the gelling problem situation uh, when OEM coolant is mixed with the other brands? And I think versus mixing with other brands, I think it's oat, non-oat, uh, if you want to clarify. Yes, correct. It's, it's what you don't want to mix is you don't want to mix the oat coolant with the non-oat coolant. That's really what's going to lead to gelling. Tatter. Yeah, correct. And so you, what you want to do is you really want to investigate, you know, uh, the machine, maybe, maybe it's not our machine, right? It's not a case branded machine or something like that. It's worth your time to find out what type of coolant is in that machine. If you've never had a gelling experience, it's a very time consuming and frustrating experience to clean out a system. So we try to work with all of our customers to make sure that they, they stop, they, they pause, understand exactly what they're pouring in what machine to make sure that the two are uh, compatible. It is critical. Sticking with the uh, the topic of fluids today, um, you talked earlier about the new Hytran Premium. The question came in is, is, will these newer fluids really work on older equipment? I think what they're asking is, is it really backwards compatible to older machines? Yes, and that's a great question that we get all the time. Yes, we've tested it in all different machines. Uh, we've specifically made sure that it was backwards compatible. It'll work in old equipment. Uh, as far back as you want to go, it'll work in, in current equipment. 
Um, and it is an improvement upon the previous high trend, but they are, they can be mixed. Okay. We've got a, a question here from uh, uh, one of our uh, great uh, dealer team members here. Uh, do we offer a harder compound track for our track units to give highway guys longer life? Uh, and how do we know what, well, this is more of an internal question on ordering, but what are our track options uh, as it relates to uh, CTLs for that type of application? No, that's a great question. And we have two different track options that are available. One is our standard track that has kind of a, a W type pattern. Um, and that's really great for snow and giving you traction there. But as you were talking about for those highway guys, we have our heavy duty track and that has a harder composite and when you go to that upgrade and it's not that much more expensive, you're going to see a much longer extended life because of the, the harder compound or the carcass. You know, the carcass is the thickness of that track and, and as, long, as well as the extra belting that is run through that track. And that's where you're going to see those extra hours for those people that are running on those hard surfaces, that, that finished surface, that concrete, that asphalt, you know, that would usually true or chew up or, or wear down a standard track faster. So that there is that heavy duty track option out there, Bill. And Roger, we'll have our guys reach out to you after the event today to talk about any ordering questions that you might have. Uh, another question came in uh, to your point earlier on uh, attachments, Garrett. Uh, can I upgrade or enhance the existing auxiliary hydraulics on my skid steer? Yeah, and I think Ted touched on this a little bit. Depending on what your size machine your skid steer is, you are going to be able to um, add hydraulics to it. You know, so like for example, our SR175B has the standard hydraulics, and all of our compact track loaders can have the high flow hydraulics added as well. So you're going to get you know the same pressure, but you're going to get a higher flow to run some more demanding attachments. And then on any of our current 90 horse machines those machines are going to be able to get enhanced high flow. So you're looking at around 4,000 PSI, and that's really designed to run those demanding attachments, you know, cold planers, mulching heads, concrete saws, things that are really going to take a lot of hydraulic power to, to move. So yes, there are options out there to upgrade those hydraulic systems at your case dealer. Excellent. And uh, another question that has come in here, I, I think we're, in a cold snap now and about to uh, have a particularly harsh cold snap here, at least in the upper Midwest, uh, frozen def, uh, does that in any way harm operation? No, uh, the, the machines are designed to actually unthaw frozen def. There's a heating element that's in those tanks and def, it doesn't really, de you know, break down based on just freezing conditions, which actually harms def more than anything else is actually being stored for long durations of time, especially at elevated high temperatures. High temperatures was, is what's going to cause it to break down. I mean, other than, uh, you know, frozen def doesn't pour well if you're trying to add it to a machine. That's a consideration that you want to have. Uh, but yes, the machines do unthaw that def and they, they have a grace period when they start up. So that way it unthaws and then the emission system will be functioning correctly. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you for your time today. Thank you for all who turn, uh, tuned in at home today. Appreciate you spending some time with us. We will be sending a recording of this out uh, via email afterwards. And as Brent alluded to, uh, here in the, the coming days, we'll be announcing the next two of these webcasts uh, on kce.com. The first one will be February 24th, where we'll talk about acquisition uh, options as you're looking to grow and expand your fleet. And on March 24th, uh, we will be diving even deeper into the issue of fluids, filters, and uh, other parts and consumables. Thank you all for spending time with us today. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to anyone uh, here in the Case Universe, whether it's your dealer, uh, your field rep, or uh, any members of the product or service team here. And most importantly, be safe out in the field. Thank you for spending time with us today. We'll see you next time.